questions you've got as well. But why I wanted to do this was because people were asking me questions about flying my family private. And I thought maybe it would be fun just to talk about it, to talk about my experience of it. So this may be just like a 15 minute call. Maybe it will be 20 minutes or a little bit longer, whatever you need. Okay, so here we go. I was thinking about it and all, I was thinking about it and the decision to go private and all of that. And what I can tell you was one of the first things was there was a time where I wasn't even aware that it was possible for someone like me to fly private. My circle, they didn't fly private. I didn't grow up flying private. I didn't see it. It wasn't modeled for me. So I didn't know it was an option. When I started to get into the work that I do, and I started to see that it was possible, then it opened up my awareness that, oh, it is possible, but I still didn't think it was for me. It, so now it was like, oh, people that I sort of know do this, but it's for them. Does that make sense? So people that I sort of know do this, but it's still not for me. And then there was an opportunity to win um, an op win a, a chance to fly private with Bob, which I've talked about before, Bob Proctor, my mentor. And I was on that, and that was my first foray into that. So now, so what is happening? So let's just go back to, to this. What is happening? What is happening is, first of all, I had, I moved from not even knowing that it was possible for me to it is possible. No, actually, it didn't go from that. I went from not knowing it's possible for me to having a bit more contact with people that did do it. So I knew that it was possible, but still not for me, for them. Then I knew that I could it could be possible for me, but it was also through somebody else. So it's still not possible for me through me, but I'm getting closer. Now, as I'm getting closer, as this is happening, I'm also acclimatizing and getting more and more comfortable with the idea. So the first time that I flew private, it's like I've flown private so many times, but the first time I did was with Bob. And at that time I was a guest and I remember just and taking it all in the whole experience of it and being blown away by it like it was absolutely incredible the whole process I remember when I got there I was told to come like 30 minutes before but I was still there well over an hour before because I couldn't wrap my head around it like I literally did not know how do you go to the airport to get on a plane just 30 minutes before like I do not understand that so my paradigm would not let me. I was trying to tell the person, yes, come at this time. But it was like, rrr, 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 rrr. no, come at this time. So then we go to the airport. And, and, I, and here's the thing. Okay, we're going back. I'm just going to be honest with you people. The thing is, is that I was uncomfortable in the back of the car. Like I had just called a regular car to take me to the airport. I was uncomfortable back there. I was not feeling like, oh, yes, I'm flying. Like this is totally natural for me. Not at all not at all because the other thing was like I didn't know where I was going to get dropped off I didn't know like exactly what would happen when I got dropped off I knew what happens when I go to the regular airport and the regular check-in and the regular lineups and take off my shoes and dump my water that I knew I knew that well this was something new so I was nervous this was such a stretch for me okay so then I arrive and Gina, Bob's like assistant of 30 years, laughs when she sees me because she's like, you're pretty early, but she was there doing some work. So I'm there, but it's such a, it's such a funny thing because I'm kind of trying to act cool. Like, oh yeah, this is just, you know, another day. And I'm really like, oh my gosh, like, okay, I'm going to have some of the coffee. I'm going to go in all the fridges and I'm looking at everything. Okay. And then Bob like saunters in like 10 minutes before we go. Like, I don't even know what I'm supposed to do. There's nothing to do. Okay. So that's another thing. There's nothing to do. 
there's literally nothing to do. It's not fancy schmancy in there because people literally just come and get on their plane. Okay, so then I, hi vibes over here in Hawaii. Hey, Nikki. Okay. And Heather says, can you speak to what it is and what to do to fix it when one has an erratic self-image? Absolutely. Absolutely, I can. Because I did. So then, yeah, so Bob Sonterson. So the pilot is the one that's looking at your passport. That is check-in. That's it. That's check-in. Then we walk onto the plane. Our luggage is put on the plane. Okay, perfect. We get off. We just go into the small building, we go to customs, we get into the cars and go. So that was my experience with Bob. I can't remember what year that was. I don't know if that was, I can't remember what year that was. But then my 50th birthday was coming up. I was taking my family to Jamaica. Now that I had arranged for, but you know what I thought? I thought it would be really fun. Like what I had a vision of was surprising them by taking them on a private jet to Jamaica. It's what I really wanted to do. I made the mistake of mentioning this to Bob. And when you mention anything to Bob, he's like, okay, so claim it. Are you gonna do it? He asks you to make a decision. So he had me stand up on a chair in this room with the top people and claim that I am going to do that. So I did. I claimed I was going to do it. And then I went into panic. And then I started looking at the prices and I went into even more panic about it. And then I, so I'm panicked about it. So fast forward, it did not happen at that time. But what here is what did happen. And this is why the date doesn't matter. You just don't stop evolving. What did happen, and Heather Sinclair, you'll appreciate this from your question, is that this, I started to get used to the idea of like, okay, me flying my family private. Who am I to do that? What would I have to do? How would I be in the world? Not going on someone else's plane, but me doing this for myself. So what that did actually was it created a lot of ideas that I had about what I could do to make that happen. And a lot of great things came from that. Now, my erratic self image, it was also stressful for me. I found it very stressful at that time because I, I, it was such, it was such a difference from where I was and how I saw myself that it was like this, it was erratic. I was kind of going back and forth, like, yes, I can do this. Or like, oh no, but I can't, it's not gonna happen. And so it didn't happen at that time. We had an amazing trip still. It didn't happen at that time, but what it did do was it allowed me to look into it. So many people have asked me, how much did it cost? And here's what's interesting about that question. You can just find out how much it costs. Just phone. Where do you wanna to go to? What kind of jet do you want? You phone and you find out. But many of us will not even do that part of it. And then it remains a mystery. And that was me, right? Like. Until I claimed it and had to really look into it, I could be like, I could already dismiss it that, well, that's not possible for me. So this is the work. So that was 2019 when my 50th birthday was. And now we're what? In 2021, when it actually happened. So there were lessons that I learned along the way. I am not the same person that I was just a few years ago. I'm not the same person I was a few months ago. The stuff that has happened this year in my life is quantum. It is quantum. What I've done in my business, what I've done personally, and that is all from self-image. So the first thing that I did, okay, okay, hold on. Gosh, I have so much I want to say to you. I feel like I should have brought on like Alicia or Leanne to ask me questions to keep me focused. But like, is this okay? How are we doing so far? How are we doing so far? 
Okay, Rebecca says, I love this, claiming it and then looking into it becomes so much closer to reality. Absolutely. It makes it possible to feel how it feels to have it. I'm looking at gorgeous houses, whoops, on the market because I want to feel how it feels to step into my new home. Yes. Okay, perfect. So then I decide, so now I'm going to go and do this mastermind in Mexico. And I know for sure that I'm going to fly, fly down their private, well, because of who I'm going with. So now here's what's interesting is that it's kind of like, we're, I just know we're going to, we're, just, we're going to do that. I still had a choice to not do it, but I knew that I was going to. And there's a group of us going. Now, what's interesting was that I also knew that I had to fly home private as well. And I had to bring my family home private. That was the part that was most important for me because that was the part that I could have dropped it. Can I go further with this? Can I explain what I mean? What I mean is this. If I went on this really expansive trip, it was, and, and I got to tell you, I had to do some breathing. I had to breathe into this next level of expansion, even booking the rooms that I booked. I don't know if you saw them, but I booked a set a, adjoining rooms, which we've never done before. We've always been in the same room. So even booking that, you know, at this type of resort was a, okay, I'm going to breathe. So I put my credit card number in there and then the private, but I knew that I couldn't go. I couldn't start the trip this way and then come back commercial. And it had nothing to do with money that I couldn't do this. I couldn't do this for my self image. It would feel so, it would feel like such a disconnect. I would be putting myself into a tailspin if I did it. If I had to wait hours and hours and hours at the Cancun airport, it would have really changed the trip for me. And so does that make sense? So, and what's interesting is Paul knew that we were gonna go there private. He was actually surprised that I booked the family back private. And I said, absolutely. That was the biggest piece of my growth in this. Now, how many, how are we doing by the way? Are we good? Yes, okay, so you guys love hearing about all of this. So now let me tell you about the process on the way to it. So I'm going to I'm going to be completely honest with you and I'm going to go back again now. When I was at the time when I didn't think this was possible for me, I judged people that did this. Ah!